Chapter 10, Electrochemical Reactions, Section 10.1, Electrochemical Cells. An electrochemical cell includes an anode and a cathode. Electrons are produced at the anode, electrons are consumed at the cathode. Let's look at this diagram of a zinc copper electrochemical cell. At the anode, zinc may lose two electrons and form zinc 2 plus. Zinc 2 plus may be dissolved in the aqueous solution. And the electrons produced at the anode may flow all the way to the cathode through a wire. And over here, copper 2 plus in the aqueous solution may get two electrons and become copper atoms. And over here, we have a porous disk. This is just to ensure the charge balance on the left and on the right. Now let's look at some properties of the anode and the cathode. The anode is the electrode where oxidation occurs. That means the oxidation number increases. For example, over here, zinc atom has an oxidation number of zero. And now over here, zinc two plus with an oxidation number of two. The electrode where electrons are produced so over here at the anode, we have electrons being produced here. Anode is what anions migrate toward. Again, uh, when we form zinc plus two over here in the aqueous solution, the charge of this solution is no longer balanced. Unless we have some anions that can flow through this porous disk and balance this zinc two plus anode has a negative sign. So we have a negative sign here for this electrode in this electrochemical cell. Now let's look at cathode. Cathode is the electrode where reduction occurs and the oxidation number is reduced. So over here we have the reduction of copper 2 plus to copper 0 the oxidation number goes from plus 2 to 0. It's certainly reduced. And at this electrode, electrons are consumed by this copper 2 plus. And the cathode is where the cations migrate toward. So over here, uh, if we have a porous disk that even allow the cations to migrate through, well, cations will move towards this way. However, if we do allow cations to move around as well, then zinc 2 plus and copper 2 plus will be uh, quickly mixed through the migration uh, through this porous stick. So that's not going to be ideal. In this diagram, we just use this um, anion flow to balance the charges on the left and on the right. There's another idea which is to use a salt bridge that contains some kind of gel uh, with, uh, for example, potassium nitrate inside. And then we can allow the potassium cation to flow to the copper side and the nitrate to flow to the zinc side to achieve the charge balance as well. And now the cathode has a positive sign right here. Uh, the trick to memorize uh, the definition of the anode and the definition of the cathode is this. We can remember oxidation occurs at the anode and both O and A are vowels. And also, we know reduction occurs at the cathode and we know R and C are both consonants. And hopefully this trick can help you memorize uh, how to kind of just label anode and cathode for a electrochemical cell. A electrochemical cell made of zinc and copper metal and ions includes an anode, a cathode, and sometimes a salt bridge. So we can again use a salt bridge to replace this porous disk. The reason we have a porous disk here is to allow anions to flow from right to left to balance the charges on both sides. But again, we can also have a salt bridge that contains some kind of, uh, you know, inert or spectator ions 
such as potassium nitrate and then we can allow the nitrate in the salt bridge to flow into this zinc container and allow the potassium cation to flow into the copper container that way we can still achieve a balanced charge uh, in both containers now let's look at the anode uh, zinc becomes zinc 2 plus and produce two electrons so we can see the oxidation number increases it's an oxidation reaction the electrons are produced and then this anode has a negative sign and now let's look at the cathode copper 2 plus gets two electrons to form a copper atom the electrode has a reduction reaction going on uh, the electrode has um, this electrons being consumed and the cathode has a plus sign now we can also look at the overall chemical reaction so on the left hand side we have this anode zinc becomes zinc 2 plus and two electrons at the cathode we have copper 2 plus with two electrons becoming copper so we can sum up this two uh, equations just make sure the number of electrons are balanced on the left and on the right so that they cancel and uh, over here I mean we are just lucky that two electrons appear on the right side and also on the left hand side therefore they cancel the overall reaction would be just zinc plus copper 2 plus the product side we have zinc 2 plus and copper so over here we have this overall electrochemical reaction zinc in the solid phase plus copper 2 plus in the aqueous solution become zinc 2 plus in the aqueous solution plus copper the overall effect is zinc passes two electrons to copper 2 plus for the electrochemical cell made of zinc and copper we can write out the half cell reactions for each of the two electrodes and look up their standard half cell potentials at room temperature so first let's look at anode at the anode we have zinc producing zinc 2 plus and 2 electrons and we can look up the oxidation potential for this anode which is 0 0.762 volt sometimes we use shorthand notations OX for oxidation and we also have a cathode over here we have copper 2 plus getting two electrons and we have this reduction half cell uh, potential uh, we write it this way from copper 2 plus to copper uh, we use a slash in the middle and we get the voltage 0 0.337 volt or simply we use RED to denote reduction the reduction potential is 0 0.337 volt the standard cell potential is the sum of the standard oxidation potential of the anode plus the standard reduction potential of the cathode so we have these two numbers adding up we get 1.0099 volt so what does this mean this means if all chemicals are in the standard state and we measure the voltage it's going to be 1.099 volt uh, this uh, compared to if you have uh, double A or triple A batteries uh, their voltages are typically 1.5 volt and this is roughly 1.1 volt and again uh, when we uh, look at this superscript not it means all chemicals are in the standard state for zinc and copper they need to be pure they need to feel an external pressure of one bar for zinc 2 plus and copper 2 plus they need to have an activity of one in the aqueous solution well if you just say approximately one molar that's fine but if you do that well still we need to keep this in mind uh, because uh, we need to uh, keep the mean ionic activity coefficients in mind they are always less than one so somehow um, if you just say one molar here one molar here that's not really the standard state uh, it's just approximation 
Uh, how do we get those uh, half cell potentials? So you cannot have a battery with only the anode or only the cathode. You need to pair them up. So whatever you measure is always the total cell potential. We cannot separate the anode from the cathode. But then how do we determine the half cell potential? Well, it's pretty simple as we did uh, in many other chapters in thermodynamics. We just need to choose a zero reference at first. Uh, in this case, for electrochemical cells, we choose the standard hydrogen electrode uh, denoted by SHE as the zero reference at all temperatures. So what we're saying there is this, uh, from H2 gas to H plus, uh, this is oxidation. From H plus to H2, this is reduction. We just arbitrarily set it to be zero as long as this H2 and this H plus are both in the standard state. Uh, what's the standard state for the hydrogen gas? Uh, it's pretty simple. If its fuel gasity is one bar, all right, then uh, this H2 gas is uh, in the standard state. But you may ask, what is fuel gasity? Fuel gasity is simply the effective uh, pressure that takes the attraction and repulsion between the gas particles into account. So uh, over here, uh, we just have a fugacity of 1 for this H2. And because the fugacity coefficient of H2 is really close to 1, I think the pressure and the fugacity of H2 are really, really close to each other. Uh, we cannot say that for hydronium in the aqueous solution because, again, we need to compute the uh, mean ionic activity coefficient for the hydronium at first and usually it's not just one or even close to one so just keep this in mind you know when we say well in the standard state over here this H plus is in the standard state that means its activity is in the standard state that means gamma times the molarity of this hydronium is equal to one so gamma is usually less than one that means the molarity of H plus should be one molo or more than one molar all right, so since we have a zero reference defined here, let's look at the uh, diagram of this uh, zero reference. We just need to have this half cell, we need to have hydrogen gas, and uh, we need to use a uh, platinum uh, electrode because uh, uh, this uh, platinum electrode can conduct electricity, can uh, uh, resist any oxidation or reduction because platinum, I think, is very inert. So it's not going to be easily oxidized or reduced. And then, of course, uh, we need uh, to balance the charge. We use a diaphragm to allow for charge balance. And finally, we need a, a certain concentration of hydronium in this aqueous solution. Uh, we want to make sure its activity is 1. Uh, now, let's uh, look at uh, this uh, half cell, uh, this copper half cell. So we can now pair up this half cell with the standard hydrogen electrode and then we can make a uh, complete electrochemical cell all right and make sure all chemicals are in their standard state and then we measure the standard cell potential and for this cell uh, the standard cell potential is 0.337 volts at room temperature and now we write out the two half cells. One is the anode. Uh, again, uh, anode, that means oxidation arcus here. So the oxidation number increases, and we have this oxidation half cell potential. At cathode reduction arcus, so we go from copper 2 plus to copper 0, and we have the reduction half cell potential. And remember, the total cell potential is the sum of the oxidation potential of the anode plus the reduction potential of the cathode. So the reduction potential of the cathode is the total cell potential minus the oxidation potential at the anode. So over here uh, we have uh, this equals 0 0.337 over here we have 0 by definition you know it's just choosing to be zero reference and then we get the reduction potential for copper which is 0 
and after we get the half cell potential for copper we will be able to determine the oxidation potential for this uh, zinc electrode because now we can pair up the copper electrode and the zinc electrode and we're going to just measure the total uh, cell potential and remember uh, the total cell potential is equal to the oxidation potential of the anode plus the reduction potential of the cathode so it's just simple mass and finally if you have a electrode its reduction potential is negative oxidation potential and vice versa